Hey friends, Dr. Hampton here. If you're carnivore curious on a keto diet and thinking about restricting carbs further or are already carnivore, this is not the video to skip. Because when I attended the symposium for a metabolic health conference in August of 2025, I was there as a guest speaker with a topic of obesity without overeating. I had the pleasure of hearing from one of my colleagues later that day, Dr. Rob Cyrus, who raised a challenging question. Could a strict zero carb approach increase plaque in some genetically susceptible folks that turn heads, including mine. I mean, after all, I'm a carnivore. So today, I want to walk you through the newest data, why some people might need small adjustments, and how to stay both metabolically sharp and cardioprotective without panic, without dogma, and with a lot of compassion for our individual biology. First, credit where it's due. I want to honor Dr. Rob Cyrus for asking hard questions, Dave Feldman and Nick Norwitz for pushing this field forward, and the entire team that did the heavy lifting on the recent LMHR research. They've opened a door for a better conversation, and that's what we're having today. Let's start with the 2024 cross-sectional keto trial. Researchers looked at people who developed very high LDL on keto, what Dave Feldman calls lean mass hyperresponders, and compared their plaque burden by coronary CT against match control. Bottom line, Despite sky-high LDL, their overall plaque burden looked similar to controls, and LDL itself didn't correlate with plaque in either group. That's a snapshot in time, not destiny. But it counters the idea that keto LDL automatically equals more plaque. Then came the 2025 follow-up, the Keto CTA Longitudinal Study. About 100 LMHR or near LMHR folks were tracked for a year with AI-qualified coronary CT. On average, non-calcified plaque crept up a bit. But here's the twist. Neither APOB nor LDL exposure predicted who progressed. The best predictor was what they already had, baseline plaque. In other words, plaque predicts plaque. Now, to me, that says our first job isn't tribal warfare over diets. It's to find plaque and manage it if it's there. Now, where does Dr. Cyrus's concern fit? His hypothesis is that some strict zero-carb LMHRs, especially those with a diabesogenic background, may suppress GLP-1 and insulin so much that glucose control drifts from gluconeogenesis, nudging vascular inflammation and soft plaque. Is that proven? Not yet. Is it biologically plausible? Yes. And the physiology is interesting. While carbs certainly trigger GLP-1, protein and certain fats can do that too. Amino acids like phenylalanine, glutamine, and others, as well as dietary fat through gut hormone signaling, can raise GLP-1 in humans. So the statement GLP-1 requires carbs is maybe a little too strong. Our incretin system is more nuanced. And yes, Nick Norris published a now famous N equals one. We're adding about 100 grams of carbs a day, Oreos of all things, drop LDL far more than a high intensity statin in the same person. That teaches us two things. One, some LMHRs can radically lower LDH by reintroducing carbs. Two, that's a mechanistic demonstration, not a clinical recommendation. No one needs to eat cookies to be heart healthy, but the experiment shows the lipid system is responsive to fuel mix in certain phenotypes. So how do we lead with reason, not fear? Here's my voice of reason framework that I use in clinic and on this channel. Step one, test the thing that kills people, not the thing that trends on social media. That means a coronary artery calcium score, and when appropriate, a coronary CT angiography or CCTA. Looking for soft plaque. If you already have plaque, the 2025 data says you're more likely to accumulate more. That's the person who needs a tailored plan maybe right now. Blood pressure optimized. Sleep dialed in. Regular movement. Stress reduction. No smoking. And then we optimize the inputs. Low carb. Real food. Protein adequacy. Healthy animal fats. 
these changes alone can lower inflammation and improve the numbers we care about. Now, if imaging shows higher risk or plaque keeps progressing, for some of you, it may be time to discuss medication options that stabilize plaque. No pressure. I know how you guys feel about medication. Just shared decision making, whatever you choose. Step two, gather your metabolic weather report. I look at A1C or CGM patterns, triglyceride to HDL ratio, high sensitivity C-reactive protein and set rate, APOB to A ratio, and a baseline lipoprotein small particle A, which is a genetic marker of heart disease risk. If you're zero carb and over time your A1C creeps into the 5.7 to 5.9 range, triglycerides drift up from a formerly low baseline and inflammation inches upward, you might be that subgroup Dr. Cyrus worries about. That's not a panic button. It's a lab guided nudge. And by the way, if you haven't seen my video about how to correct your A1C value based on the red cell life expectancy, check out my video about how to correct your A1C. Sometimes a creep up is really not a creep up on low carb diets. Step three, adjust like a scientist, not an ideologue. For LMHRs with clean imaging and steady labs, it's reasonable to continue what's working and simply monitor on schedule. For folks with plaque or drifting labs, try a six to 12 week N equals one protocol. You have two evidence informed levers. Lever A, add 10 to 30 grams of total carbs per day from whole foods. Think berries, kefir or yogurt, or small portions of root vegetables. Pair it with protein and fat to blunt spikes. Recheck your labs and if you had baseline plaque, consider repeat imaging on an appropriate cadence. Lever B, if you want to stay very low carb, you can still stimulate incretins by protein timing and possibly dairy with calcium around meals because protein and certain fats can engage GLP-1 pathways without sugar. Again, follow the data. Repeat A1C or CGM metrics, triglyceride to HDL ratio, APOE B to A ratio, and inflammatory markers. Translation, you don't have to marry Oreos to move your LDL or your GLP-1. You can date some Greek yogurt instead. Now, I want to address two myths head on. Myth one, these studies prove LDL doesn't matter. No, that's too broad. The one year LMHR data showed APOB and LDL exposure didn't predict plaque progression in this specific lean, metabolically healthy cohort over a short window, while baseline plaque did. One thing I try to do is be as evidence-based as possible. And the reality is that this study does not apply to all. So until they do studies on other types of individuals, it doesn't tell us specifically about what's going on with all phenotypes. We need outcomes, data, and longer follow-up to feel confident. Myth number two, keto causes plaque. Also no, the cross-sectional study found no excess plaque in LMHRs versus controls and no correlation between LDL and plaque at baseline. The longitudinal study saw a modest average rise in soft plaque. But again, who progressed was best explained by what was already there. That's why I keep saying image, track, personalize. So who should actually consider changes right now? Group one, LMHRs with plaque. You deserve a more aggressive plan now. Lifestyle plus whatever your preventive cardiology team recommends to stabilize plaque. Keep in mind that whatever decision is made should be grounded in what you think is best. And if keto or carnivore helps you manage weight, satiety, and glucose, you can likely keep that framework while personalizing the fuel mix and the rest of your risk stack. Group two, LMHRs without plaque, but with drifting labs. A1C ticking up, making sure it's a corrected A1C, triglycerides rising, high sensitivity C-reactive protein creeping, run the six to 12 week N equals one using lever A or B, then retest. If things improve, you've learned something about your biology. If not, we keep iterating. Curiosity over ideology. Group three, LMHRs with quiet imaging and steady labs. Carry on, keep monitoring. You don't fix what isn't broken. You verify it stays unbroken. Let's put the receipts on screen again so you can screenshot for later. Here are the studies we reference in this video. Studies I promise to have links to in the video notes. Studies that have started a very important conversation. As uncomfortable as this conversation is, a conversation we must have. Here's my promise as your root cause doc. Even as one of your biggest advocates for a carnivore diet, I will never 
be so indoctrinated into a diet that I stopped questioning it. I went from plant-based to low carb, then keto, and now carnivore. Not because of a tribe, but because of results in real humans. Questioning is how we keep patients safe, but we don't rewrite our whole life based on one paper, one tweet, or one YouTube clip. We measure, we personalize, we iterate. If you're concerned, don't guess. Get a CAC or when appropriate, a CCTA. Bring your numbers, A1C or CGM trends, triglyceride to HDL ratio, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and maybe even an APOB to A ratio or a lipoprotein small particle A, which is a one-time genetic marker of heart disease risk. If there's plaque, we treat plaque. If labs drift, we try measured reversible tweak. Small whole food carbs with protein and fat or strategic protein dairy timing. If everything's quiet, we celebrate and keep an eye on the dashboard. As we wrap up this video, I want to give a big thanks to Dr. Rob Cyrus for sparking this conversation and to Dave Feldman, Dr. Nick Norwitz, Dr. Budoff, and their teams for doing the work. Science isn't a destination, it's a dance. And our goal is simple. Keep your metabolic health and your arteries happy at the same time. And if this brought you clarity, join me and help me spread this message by sharing this video. Like and subscribe so that more people will hear this message. And definitely don't forget to click on the video on the screen so you'll know how to calculate your corrected A1C value. I'm Dr. Tony Hampton and I can't wait to see you in my next video.